seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition and lift off of Falcon 9. Go NROL 113. Vehicles pitching down range. Stage 1 propulsion is nominal. If you're just joining us, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 4 East, as you can hear on your screen, and we are getting some awesome shots of ascent. We've also heard a few call-outs so far from Mission Control. Nominal and power and telemetry. Including that everything is looking nominal from both a power and telemetry standpoint. Now, in just a few moments, we're going to throttle down the engines in preparation for Max-Q, and with that call-out, we hear that Falcon 9 is moving faster than the speed of sound. Max Q. There's that Max Q call out. As you may have heard us mention before, Max Q is a critical flight milestone because this is the moment in flight with the highest amount of aerodynamic pressure. So with that, we have three events coming up in quick succession here, starting with MECO, Stage SEP, and SES-1. Main engine cutoff, or MECO for short, is where all nine M1D engines will shut off to slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation. There's confirmation that we're chilling the MVAC engine for SCS-1. Stage two, of course, will continue to second engine start one after stage SEP, and that's when the single MVAC engine will ignite to propel the second stage to orbit. Less than a minute after all of these flight events, the fairing halves will also separate and jettison away from the rocket. We'll hear that one called out from Mission Control, but as a reminder, we won't have any payload views tonight at the request of our customer. Standing by for main engine cutoff in just about 15 seconds. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. We have had great confirmation and views there of main engine cut off, stage separation, and of course, second engine start one. We are standing by now for the call out for fairing separation. And we will be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves once they fall back down to Earth using our recovery ship, Go Beyond. Fairing separation confirmed. There's confirmation of fairing sup. Now, coming up about three minutes from now, the booster, which you've got great views of the grid fins on your screen right now, will initiate its entry burn to begin its journey to the Of Course I Still Love You drone ship, which is currently stationed in the Pacific Ocean. Those grid fins on board stage one are the primary mechanical structure that we use to guide the rocket on its way back to Earth. Of course, what we are leading up to is the entry burn, expected again at just about T plus six minutes after liftoff. If you are just joining us today, you're coming in to our live webcast of the NRO payload launch. We had an on-time 8.20 p.m. Pacific liftoff from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California, Followed by successful main engine cutoff, stage separation, second engine start one, and fairing separation.
To start the entry burn, we'll relight three of the M1D engines on board the first stage, which is essentially the same as pumping the brakes. We need to slow the vehicle down as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere to reduce reentry forces, which helps us to recover and reuse the booster on future flights. During the entry burn, Falcon 9 will be decelerating by firing those Merlin engines, but we're still moving really fast. This causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, which is also known as the rocket's plume, and deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle surface. That soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each repeated flight, the soot builds up a little more on the outside of the vehicle. You can, of course, continue to track the first stage telemetry in the bottom left corner of your screen as the booster continues to make its way back to our drone ship, of course I still love you, which is currently stationed in the Pacific Ocean. Reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical space infrastructure, in today's case, supporting national security. The Falcon 9, excuse me, the Falcon 9 first stage that is supporting today's mission performed its, is about to perform this entry burn for the 20th time. Stage one, entry burn startup. There we have great views that entry burn has begun on board our first stage booster, and we are expecting this burn to last about 20 seconds. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. And confirmation of shutdown. The Merlin engines on board the first stage are optimized for sea level, which is primarily because they operate in the Earth's atmosphere. They achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust each during both ascent and descent. At liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage has thrust greater than five 747 airplanes at full power. Stage one FTS is safe. By contrast, the MVAC engine on board the second stage has a much wider nozzle and is optimized to 220,500 pounds of thrust in vacuum. Now coming up in just over 30 seconds, we'll have our landing burn on board the first stage. Stage one, transonic. Confirmation that stage one is transonic on its way back to its stage rendezvous point FTS is saved. with our drone ship. Just like the entry burn, we're expecting our landing burn to be relatively quick. The difference here, though, is that what we're using this burn for is to touch down softly on the surface of our drone ship. Stage one, landing burn confirmation of landing burn startup. can see those grid fins working as we target Stage the drone one, ship here. Stage one, landing confirmed. And confirmation of touchdown. This again was the 20th launch and landing for this first stage. This landing also marks SpaceX's 345th recovery of an orbital class rocket, including first stage landings for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy.